My name is Debbie, and I live in Huntington, New York. I'm a mother of two children, seven and nine years old, and we recently had a cell repeater, or a cell tower, placed on a utility pole outside of my house on the right-of-way of the property. It emits radio frequency radiation 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether we like it or not. And it's an eyesore. It's very tall, towers over my backyard. When my kids play, it's what I see in the background. And it looms there. And I wonder, are my kids safe? Are we safe to live in this house now that that has been placed out there? I know I read a lot on the topic recently. Since I've got one, I thought I'd educate myself a bit. It seems to me that children have thinner skulls and still developing immune systems, and they absorb much more radiation than adults will absorb. So they're part of what's called a vulnerable population, along with the elderly, the disabled, the immune compromised. They're vulnerable, pregnant women, and so my children live here and play here and sleep here 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's 70 feet outside their bedroom window. So I went to the town of Huntington and I asked for some answers as to who put the equipment in and what exactly is emitted from the equipment and are there guidelines for the equipment standards for safety and bottom line is it safe or will we be affected in the long term and so the answer I got was you are completely safe there is no danger in having one of these outside your home it is FCC compliant so what does that mean well our standards our guidelines come from the FCC the Federal Communications Commission and because it's below a certain height, there's no monitoring of that equipment required. There's no testing of it required. But they say it's FCC compliant, and so what does that mean? Well, I went to the FCC website and I found that the guidelines come from the 1996 Telecommunications Act, which was written in 1996, over 30 well, over 20-something years ago, and the research that the guidelines were based on was from the 1980s, over 30 years ago. This seems a bit outdated. Haven't there been studies since then to, you know, that would cause an update in the standards, um, some sort of revision of some sort, maybe? So, well, I did find that the Government Accountability Office, the GAO, agrees with me that in 2012 they submitted a report to the FCC asking them to revise, to revisit and revise their standards, their outdated standards, and the FCC responded by opening a window to accept submissions, you know, um, feedback from scientists, experts worldwide, and they received 955 submissions within a two-year period. Then the window closed, and everyone waited to see what the FCC would do. Well, to this day, it's still considered an open docket. Nothing at all has been done. It hadn't been addressed. So also, I learned that the limits here for radio frequency radiation emission come from actually not come from but they are much higher than in a lot of other countries most other countries actually they're much higher here from what I understand uh, Italy their guidelines or their limits are ten times lower than ours and um, Switzerland same thing ten times lower and I was surprised to learn that even China had limits that were ten times lower than what we have here in the United States this um, so this is very concerning to me. Why are our limits so high? Well, it turns out the FCC chairperson, Ajit Pai, he worked for Verizon for two years as their attorney before he sat in that seat where he is now. And the prior 
chairperson of the FCC, Tom Wheeler, he worked for the lobbying, he was a lobbyist for the communications industry, for the telecommunications industry, before he became the chairperson of the FCC. So that makes me wonder if maybe there's a conflict of interest here. Um, and you know, in my home, I can shut down my Wi-Fi, I can shut off my router, I can unplug any devices that I feel might create electromagnetic frequency radiation if I like, because it's my home and I have control over those things. But when it comes to this cell tower outside of our window, I'm no longer in control. Those electromagnetic frequency waves, radiation waves, come right into my home and pollute my home, whether I like it or not, whether we like it or not. And my children and ourselves are just exposed all the time now. So what are the long-term effects going to be? I feel like we are an experiment. What's going to happen in decades of living with constant exposure to this low frequency radiation? There was a study I came across called the National Toxicology Program Study. It was a $25 million impressive study done right here in the United States. And the final results haven't been released yet, any day now though. But there was a partial release of some findings in 2016, I believe it was May. And the reason they rele released partial results was because they felt that the, what they found was so important that they wanted to get it out as soon as possible. And what they found was that non-ionizing radiation, radiation that does not heat the body, such as electromagnetic frequency radiation, which is what they used for the study, it did cause malignant gliomas, an increase in malignant gliomas, which is brain cancer. So since those partial findings were released, the American Academy of Pediatrics has announced that they now believe there needs to be more research, and so did the American Cancer Society. Dr. Otis Brawley is the chief medical officer at the American Cancer Society. And he said that that study marks a paradigm shift. It's very frightening to be living in my home and watching my young children grow up and knowing that they have this exposure you know, that we just didn't plan on them having when we chose to live in this home. The World Health Organization classified electromagnetic frequency radiation as a class 2b carcinogen, which is in the same category as lead and DDT. That means it's a possible carcinogen. But now that the, toxic, the National Toxicology Program partial findings were released, many scientists around the world, many health experts, do believe that it should be reclassified now as a probable carcinogen. But it's not stopping the town of Huntington and other towns across the nation from allowing these cell repeaters or cell towers to be placed on utility poles within just a few feet from people's houses. Something needs to be done. We all need to band together. We need to start a grassroots movement. It doesn't really seem like we're going to get the protection on a federal level. And so we need to get together and contact our representatives and create some new legislation that will protect the residents from this happening. Maybe set back ordinances that will, will assure that these don't get placed close to homes and schools and libraries and daycare centers. I'm not sure what the solution is, but it needs to start with us. And I hope that we can all find each other and find the time and put the time into this really important issue so that we have some control over our freedom and our homes and our environment and we can protect our children. Thanks for listening.